Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we will go through a quick Wireshark navigational exercise. I've had a little bit of feedback from people asking for more examples of how to use Wireshark, how to navigate, what to do, what not to do, filters to use, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to jump into this with a very simple example that anybody can do anywhere, at work, at home, it doesn't matter. So I've got Wireshark here. It's launched. It's not running yet. It's, I mean, it's not capturing yet. And basically, I just want to show people that you can use a capture filter right here. Now, I'm not going to, and I'm doing that on purpose because I want a lot of stuff so we can concentrate on display filters. Most of the time when you troubleshoot or baseline, you don't know what the problem is, so you probably don't want to dedicate a capture filter because you might miss something. So we're going to pick our adapter. This is my Ethernet adapter. It's called Killer. Click, click, and now it's capturing. So, of course, Anything flying around the network, any broadcast, multicast, anything from my machine is coming into my capture. So what I'm going to do is just to generate some traffic, go to Internet Exploder, and I'm going to just simply refresh my page. I'm going to click on a link. So I've got a lot of traffic now in the background. I'm going to just kind of slide that over. And then I'm going to open a command prompt. So from the command prompt, I want to test a couple of things. and and I'm going to suggest that people baseline their DNS. And when you baseline DNS, pinging a DNS server is a good start, but that's not really comprehensive enough. So the first thing I want to do is clear my DNS cache. Now I'm running Windows 8, but this command works in Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 7. It doesn't matter. This is a pretty universal command. So you probably all know ipconfig. And I'm going to type slash flush DNS, enter. So now my DNS cache is empty. So I'm going to ping google.com. So if this works out, my machine has to resolve google.com to an IP, and then it's going to ping that host as well. I'm also going to ping, oh, I don't know, the tech firm.com. And lastly, I'm going to ping uh, both of Google's DNS servers. Eight. Now when you're pinging things, uh, I've in the past I've told people make sure that you uh, let me just move this guy down so you can see the bottom part of my screen. I'm just realizing that you're not going to see that. There you go. I make sure that you ping with an appropriate packet size. I'm going to use defaults right now because this is not a ping article. This is a Wireshark navigational exercise. So I'm done with all this. I'm going to go back to Wireshark and I'm going to hit stop. So where do we start? Well, right now, down here on the bottom, you can see there's 8,535 packets, which sounds like a lot, but in the real world, this is nothing, right? You can add a couple of zeros to that and they get a little more realistic. So I need to filter out just what I've done. I just want to find my ping packets and my DNS packets. So if I go to my display filter up here, I can just type DNS. And you can notice the background went from that kind of pink salmon -y color to that green IV color right now. And you can see all the DNS stuff that came out of my machine. So that's good. That's one half of it. I also want to see ICMP. Enter. And there's all my ICMP. Now this is really important because ICMP people will know as their ping packets, their trace route packets. But it's also an error protocol that can be used by servers, routers, switches, firewalls, that sort of thing. So you probably always want to have an ICMP filter just to see if there's any errors. And you can see right now, look, host unreachable, host unreachable, host unreachable. And the funny thing is, the web page loaded, the pings worked. So you might wonder, what's, what's this all about? Okay, so I'm going to just add two protocols to my display filter. So I'm going to do ICMP or DNS. Enter. So now I've got my DNS. And if I move down a little bit, I've got ICMP. So now I can concentrate on just those two protocols. If you look at the bottom here, out of 8,500 packets, I'm only looking at 94 right now. So things start to look more obvious. So I'm going to just start at the beginning here. And you can see it says host unreachable, host unreachable, host unreachable, and then lovemytool.com, right? What is that? Well, again, from my website, I clicked on this article that went to lovemytool.com, right? That's where that came from. So now, I get an appreciation of what's loading in the background. Well, there's my DNS command. And you can look, this is called a transaction number. 
592, we'll just call it that right now, 592, so I know it's the same response to the same query. And I can see that took 85 milliseconds. How do I know that? Well, under View, Time Display Format, I have Seconds Since Previously Displayed Packet, and I've got milliseconds configured right now. So that is 85 milliseconds after this. So that's, that's my measurement. After that, I can actually see there's a destination unreachable, host unreachable. And it's from this 1044, 10.30 set. What is that? Right? So then I can go look into that. What does that have to do with any of this? Is that a DNS? Is that a proxy? Is that a firewall? What is this box? So these, this is the first step of application baselining. Don't freak out. Don't go down the rabbit hole. Just make a note, 37, question mark, and you can go look into it, all right? The other question is, does this happen more than once? So you can also see that the DNS that I, I am using here is 8844, right? That's one thing that I'm going to want to check as well. Do I have other DNS servers in my configuration? And as you go down the list, you'll see more DNS queries DNS responses. Again, you want to make sure that you look at those transaction IDs and you can say, oh wait, query, query, that is not a response. Oops, right, that sort of thing. Now, I want to show you a little, uh, a neat little trick. If you do um, look at a query and I go to DNS down here in the bottom, click, click, and you just slide this panel up a little bit and it says right here, the response is in frame number or packet number 1296. If I double click that, it will jump to 1296. In that response, it actually tells me the response time. So if these DNS packets aren't right beside each other, this tells me the time between the command and the response. So 0 0.008, so that's 8 milliseconds. Now with Microsoft, I try not to go less than a millisecond because the drivers typically aren't accurate enough. I just found in my testing. So 8 milliseconds is good enough. Don't worry about 8.64, just don't worry about it. Just 8 milliseconds is good enough. So there's my DNS. Now I'm going to scroll down a little bit because I want to find my ping packets. This isn't it. It's unreachable, it's unreachable, it's unreachable. So this is becoming quite the issue. And oh look, there's now, there's another IP peak jumping in 10.0.83.62 oh, who's that so this is yet something else that's jumping into the fray uh, again everything works so there's nothing to panic about but these are all things you want to note in future broadcasts I will actually go through what those are and how to fix that okay but I just want to show you that even though there's errors under the covers everything still works there's my ping request and there's my ping reply again that took seven milliseconds and who am I pinging? Well, that Google.com got resolved to 172.217 and 172.217, right? That's what we're pinging. And now I can see there's the reply, seven milliseconds. There's my next reply, five milliseconds. Just scrolling down a little bit. Reply, seven milliseconds. Reply, six milliseconds. So it was five, six, seven, seven. So I have an idea of how long these pings take. So even if I don't see the ping response times on the console or the command prompt, I can still calculate this accordingly. So the last thing you're going to want to do is when you go through all this stuff, you might want to just start at a really high level, a holistic view. And you're probably going to want to go to view, turn off the packet details, view, turn off the packet bytes. This gives you a lot more screen real estate to work with. Patterns become more evident and therefore you can find whatever you're looking for possibly a little bit easier. So I hope that helped. Have a good day. Bye for now.